Shia is not at all the video game that I expected it to be. Whenever I first saw this one make the rounds on any game TikTok years ago during its development, I saw a Wind Waker clone that would probably be a little fun for a little while. But what we got was a cultural delight filled with drama, surprises, and so much dang inspiration that I couldn't put it down. On the surface, Chia looks like another pretty good, very gorgeous open world collectathon. Gonna need to pet you. Don't know what I have to do, but I'm gonna. Oh! Oh! Dig a bit below the surface or just pay attention to the very, very, very beginning of the game, and you'll discover that this game is a love letter, but not to gaming, but instead to New Caledonian culture. And it's there where this nerdy sermon picks up. What can we learn from the way that this game not only appreciates culture, but celebrates it? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith, games, and it's all fun and games till the bad guy literally eats a baby. What was that now? What was that now? She just ate a baby? I am your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly deep dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. Folks, as always, we're going to be starting with our scripture for today. Although, since it is Easter, I thought it'd be fun to do something a little bit different with this one. And so, our liturgist is actually going to be my daughter, Nora, reading one of my favorite passages of scripture for us today. This is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. This is coming from the NRSV UE, if you can understand uh, what she is even saying. Um, these are going to be some really big words for somebody her size. So uh, give her a lot of grace and enjoy this reading of Matthew 28 by Nora. And Jesus came and said to them, All of the morning and heaven and of mercy have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples and all me, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to make everything that I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So I'm not going to be spoiling pretty much any of the story of Chia for this one, except for the whole baby eating joke earlier. She unhinged her jaw and ate a baby. But look, if I could have been warned about that from the start, I think I would have preferred to have known than not known. Just saying. The basic gist of Chia is that you are a child who has an amazing power to merge with objects and animals via a thing that they call soul jumping in the game. All right, enter soul jump mode and I can become a dog! Calm down, Nathan. In the opening, your dad is captured by mysterious villains. No! No! And you are saved by the skin of your teeth. You then set out on the journey to find your dad and rescue him by using your magical powers. It's a pretty vanilla storyline, right? But then you actually see the game and it's just breathtaking. The world is so realized and gorgeous. The water looks amazing. The mountains feel massive. The lighting is immaculate. It is a fantastical space that is just plain old fun to explore within. The feeling that I relate it closest to is the first time I played the Arkham series and I got to really explore the like fully realized of Gotham or the Asylum. The reason behind this inspired nature is because it is an inspired game. As the game developers let you know as the player at the very beginning of the game uh, in a section that most players probably skipped right past assuming it was just a tutorial section. Chia is a game inspired by New Caledonia, a small island in the Pacific Ocean. The opening part of the game explains that the co-founder of the game company based this as a love letter to the region of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean, which is just between Australia and Fiji. While the game itself changes up some things here and there to preserve a respectful portrayal of the land, the devs did all they could to instill a sense of culture, music, language, folklore, traditions, landmarks, environments, biomes, and even more to this space. The game and the space that it creates feels real because it is real. And that's just a really stinking cool way to tell a story. So upon learning that this whole thing was based on a real space, I did what every good nerd would do. I Googled them or binged them if you're a Moviga fan. And that Google adventure started to take me on an adventure through maps. So I took a virtual tour of the relatively tiny island and it didn't take long until I found a Jesus. Upon exploring the tinier island of the Isle of Pines, just south of the bulk of New Caledonia, I stumbled upon this awe-inspiring statue of Jesus surrounded by a circle of hand-carved totem heads. It's bizarre and gripping, and I had to sit with it and process it for just a moment. It's really interesting. And it reminded me of how Christianity 
impacts culture. Like many areas of the size of New Caledonia, Christianity is a result of colonization, this time by France, hence the chapel associated with this monument being uh, attributed to Saint Maurice or Moritz, a well-known Egyptian martyr, fairly beloved by French people. Colonization often is a pretty negative and detestable thing that we should be pretty ashamed and repentant of, especially in instances of violence, physical or figurative, when we destroy cultures. But then there's this image of a circle of totem heads surrounding Jesus. And it, it just, it just kind of brings me joy. At our best, Christians are able to bring new life into existing culture, not destruction. In truth, religion can be used a bit like the medium of the video game was used in Chia. And that feels like a pretty good place to bring in our adorable scripture for today. This chunk of scripture is lovingly known as the Great Commission. It's where Jesus gives the disciples a direct and clear commission of what their goal is going forward. Jesus says to the disciples, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always. To the end of the age. Let's break this down into important chunks. Number one, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. So Jesus is like the one best equipped to give this command. Number two, go make disciples of all nations. Not some, not most, all. All are welcome. This is radical, especially for the closed off view of the hundreds of pages of prior reading in the canonized Bible. It's not just Israel anymore. Everyone from Israel to New Caledonia must be sought out. Three, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's that's just conversion. That's new life. Baptism is how we do the thing. It's not the first thing. We don't believe that in Methodism. Prevenient grace is with those before they even know it and make that call. But ultimately, we want to lead towards transformation via baptism. Four, teach them to obey everything that I commanded them. Okay, Jesus is instructing us. Teach them everything that I commanded. That, that can be as simple as love God, love neighbor, the two greatest commandments, or as complex as the full Sermon on the Mount. And fifth and final, know that I am with you in this. Take heart, be encouraged, Jesus is with us. In the United Methodist Church, we sum this concept up in our Book of Discipline in paragraph 120. The mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Local churches provide the most significant arena through which disciple making occurs. So that's the big goal, and that's how our big goal of United Methodism lines up next to it. Unfortunately, and also fortunately, both of these leave a lot up to interpretation. It's this lack of clarity that has led to centuries of harm in acts like colonization, inquisitions, and other historical dirty words. But it's also this lack of clarity that has led to such creative expressions of the church, like what you're watching right now in the form of Checkpoint Church. The key aspect for me in both iterations of this Great Commission lies in what we actually do when we get to all those nations that we're called to serve. Matthew tells us to teach. The Methodist Book of Discipline tells us to transform. And then I love that the Book of Discipline also tells us that it is through the local church that this work is best done. Why? Well, for the same reason that the teachings of Jesus are so powerful. To truly teach like Jesus, you have to teach on a local level because Jesus taught through relationship and through cultural appreciation. Jesus didn't come into town, plow down the synagogue and build a cafe gymnatorium for his mega church. Jesus ate with them. He sang with them. He laughed with them, shared fish and bread with them, cooked breakfast for them, practiced their actual faith tradition and preached in their faith spaces. The ministry of Jesus is one that partakes and transforms from within. It doesn't dominate and excavate the experience out of the space. It's for that reason that I love this image of Jesus surrounded by totems. It's the same reason that I love that we are a church that meets on Twitch, Discord, and YouTube. Jesus is with us when we're doing this work. And so Jesus is with us in the midst of the technology and in the carved wood on the beach. Jesus is there. Transformation is happening. As many of us celebrate today the resurrection of Christ on this Easter Sunday, it is this message that I find myself the most firmly rooted in. The resurrection and conquering of death by Jesus isn't a conquering of people and culture, it's an embrace of the tapestry of life and the cultures woven into it as we expand the love of Jesus into all nations. It's why we do what we do. It's how we do what we do. It's the work 
and the whole thing that makes Jesus different. So just like this team of game developers used the medium of video games to breathe transformation into the culture of New Caledonia, Jesus is continuing to breathe transformative new life into the nerd, the geek, and the gamer through work like Checkpoint Church is doing, through work that you're doing. Here. But what does any of this mean for us today? Well, I hope that this message transformed you a little bit. Understand the difference between transformation and destruction. The Great Commission is to go to all nations and share the gospel of a loving God and of love of neighbor, of welcoming the stranger and the sick, of breaking bread and boundaries, of loving beyond the norm within the culture. Understand that what we're doing at Checkpoint is living out that commission boldly and proudly. You can join in in this clarion call of service by considering how you serve at Checkpoint Church. Level two is our most clear path towards serving others and extending that loving embrace of Jesus with them. But even if that isn't for you yet, know that if you define yourself as a Christian, this is the call placed upon you in the Great Commission. Whether you're playing a video game or talking up your favorite anime, consider how you might be able to transform the world by loving people into a relationship with Jesus, one nerd or one new Caledonian at a time. So whether you're a digital native, a Pacific Island native, or a mysterious soul swapping child, she's really, she's really something else. Know that you're always welcome here at Checkpoint Church and happy Easter. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy weeks to join us on these nerdy deep dives. If you want more of what Checkpoint Church has to offer, we are streaming every single Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday over on Twitch. You can join us any of those days, or if you need more right here, right now, you could join our Discord. We are active there every single day of the week. We have questions every single weekday. We're getting lunch there. We're playing games together. We're doing all sorts of stuff over there. I'll link both of those down below. I'll also link level two for this one. For real, if you want to know more about what it looks like to serve at Checkpoint Church, that is the answer. And hey, if you watched this far, odds are you probably liked this one. So if you liked this video, if this is one of your favorites, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Let us know that this is something that you want more of. I really do look at those thumbs ups. Uh, so let me know that this is one that you enjoyed by clicking that button for me. And if you find that you have just a little bit of extra time today and you're wanting more nerdy sermons, I'll recommend some others. First off, you could go and watch Invincible and the culture of superheroes and how uh, that kind of culture can be subverted and maybe not be exactly like we might hope. Or you could go and check out Yasuke and the adaptation of a real life story of a black samurai told through anime. That was really an impressive uh, folklore retelling. Or you can go check out Coffee Talk and talk more about that culture of welcoming others into conversation and how the church might be able to learn from it. Quick question for you. What is a game that changed the way you looked at the world physically around you that really changed the way you perceived things? Uh, I think that Chia really did give us a good look into real life, but I kind of prefer the fictionalized reality of things like Undertale that made me understand the differences between people in a really amazing way. Let me know your answer down in the comments down below. With that, we're gonna end this video as we always do with our three things that we believe to be true about every single one of you out there, regardless of whether or not you go to church, don't go to church, uh, love God, don't love God, believe in God, don't believe in God, hate the church, hate God, none of those things change these three things that we believe to be true about every single person watching this at any point in time, from wherever in the world you may be, uh, whatever may be around you, whatever you may have done in your past or in your future, we still believe these three things to be true about you. Number one, believe that God loves you like really, really loves you so much so that Jesus died and was resurrected as we celebrate on this Easter Sunday. We believe that we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here at Checkpoint Church. It's why we're reaching out into the world. It's why we're trying to transform the world by relationships with Jesus. And number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. So please stay in it. Stay with us. Get to know us. We look forward to getting to know you better. Folks, with that and whether I see you right now over in the Discord, tomorrow over on Twitch, or next week, same time, same place for another of these Nerdy Deep Dives, I look forward to seeing you then. Till next time, bye bye Is that... La Masha? Puberty? <laughs> This game is great! I wasn't expecting it to be so cheeky.